Okay. Well, hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Health Wisdom and Wealth Show. Powerful conversations for living your best life. And I am V. Lynn Hawkins, your host with our guest today, the ultimate in sexy things, Lisa Potter. And, you know, I, I felt kind of weird saying that for the beginning of the show, but it is important for you to know we've got some sexy stuff to talk about today on the path to confidence and living your best life. But before we get into things, make sure that you've got some water, you've got pen and paper, because you want to pull up a chair to the table and participate in this conversation. It's going to be a lot of really great nuggets, I can promise you. So here we go. Lisa Potter is an educator, a mentor, and someone who makes protection something sexy enough for you to want to put on and wear with confidence. She owns an agency representing and writing what I call extraordinarily owner-friendly holistic life and supplemental insurance with living benefits. And this is not your typical coverage. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about that today. She has over 150 agents on her team that operates globally in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And she and her team focus on sexy life insurance and calls it the life insurance you don't have to die to use. She's passionate about helping her clients create tax-free income using life insurance with no medical living benefits or no cost living benefits. And she asks the question, is your life insurance sexy or do you have to die to use it? And you know what? She said that to me and I was like, okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> but Lisa is committed to educating individuals and families about using a more holistic approach to wellness that focuses on how you protect yourself, decrease stress, help live longer and more vibrant lives. Thank you, Lisa, for being here with us today. Welcome to the show. My pleasure, Vilan. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's, my, it's my honor and my pleasure to be here with you today. So um, great, great intro. So what is sexy life insurance? Well, so, let me let me let me just ask you before all of that, because okay. I do want to get into that. OK, um, okay. you know, I, I recognize that you and your team have a passion for uh, living a values based life that really is about doing good and being good and making good in the world every day. And I know that there was a journey that you went through to get to this place of providing this confidence and protection that you do for families and individuals. Yeah. And this is a space I call freedom. Um, but tell us a little bit about your journey towards this focus and, and, and what you're doing now. Okay. My background has actually come full circle. It's interesting because um, I, I have an MBA. Uh, and when I got my MBA, my focus was on insurance. I actually worked as a financial analyst for an insurance brokerage international insurance brokerage when I first got out of school. But my passion for the industry was not truly ignited until uh, a number of years ago when my father became ill with cancer. And when it hits home like that for you, um, it, takes on, it's a, it takes on a different life of its own in that um, this became a mission or a crusade for me to help uh, uh, instill prosperity and protection for middle America. And um, my dad, my, we actually moved into my, my father's house, excuse me, my brother's house to take care of my dad until he died. My dad did not have any life insurance. He did have a long-term care policy, but because he did not go into a skilled nursing facility, that policy did not respond. And we decided that we wanted to keep him at home and take care of him. So when he passed, there was no life insurance and uh, the long-term care policy did not pay out. The insurance company kept that money. So what, what evolved from that and having this conversation with other friends of mine that were the same age, they said they too had had to take care of their parents. And many of them had children of their own. And they said, 
we, I have to get something in place with you, Lisa, because I cannot put my kids in the position of having to take care of me the way I had to take care of my parents. So that has, again, it has evolved into with the company that I work with into a crusade to bring prosperity and legacy wealth back to middle America with life insurance that is sexy that you do not have to die to use this truly is life insurance it is not death insurance so um that is my that's I, I, I love it what what a story and on the backstop of something that I know was difficult in caring for your father who was yes. still like that Yes. Um, but to come to the realization that you were so passionate about others not having to experience the same thing, um, it's, it's really commendable. And I know that the conversation about life insurance has always been in this frame of death. What do you have when somebody dies? Well, you've got their life insurance, but why do they call it life insurance if you only get it if they die? Well, good, good question. And the answer is nobody wants to talk about death. So ours truly is me. May, may I share a little bit about the sexy aspect of it? May I go in there? Okay. So sexy, meaning if you have a life insurance policy and you die, your beneficiaries are going to get that, uh, that let's say you have a $500,000 life insurance policy. Your beneficiaries will get that lump sum payout tax-free. The problem we have in our country is that 95% of the policies are death benefit only. And yet the majority of bankruptcies and foreclosures in our country are because of medical expenses. So I call our sexy life insurance because I don't want people to dismiss and say, oh, I have life insurance. What they don't know is what is available to you. You can get a policy like ours that's sexy, you don't have to die to use, that has a terminal illness rider, a chronic illness, which is like a long-term care rider, uh, a critical injury that's for like uh, for something if you were to fall and hit your head and had a traumatic brain injury and a critical illness like heart attack, cancer and stroke. All of those are triggers where if you had that experience while you were alive and you needed that income from your policy, you can accelerate that death benefit on that five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy for income replacement tax free payable to you while you're alive. And that is the piece that I say is typically not what's available to middle America or what's talked about because, yes. you know, you, you said it, death is hard to talk about. So they call it life insurance, but then they restrict it to this little ball of when you die, you know, at the end of the dash. Right. Um, and what you've done, what you are helping people to understand is that there's an extension of that. There's an expansion of that. And there's the ability to use um, some benefits while you're alive and while you need them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also the thing for me that is part of the disruption factor, right? There's disruption happening in the health industry, in the financial industry, the right. education industry, and much of it is led by technology. Um, especially as we're moving into the age of Aquarius and the metaverse. Um, we think about the health industry and the disruption here, and we've seen it across the whole pandemic with the shutdown of this and the shutdown of that. And people that had life insurance that only paid death benefits, what happened? Were they able to continue those? Are they in this void now of trying to figure it out again and um you know where do you see and let me put it this way what do you believe is the number one thing that you're seeing happening right now that technology or health is helping to create as change in this industry in the so in the financial well in the in the life insurance industry specifically our and this may not be exactly on point with your with your question, but it is our mission. Our company is on a mission or a crusade, if you will, to bring to to provide 
upgraded policies to to middle America and the wealthy as well, but the wealthy have been using life insurance for a long time uh, to build wealth. But this this includes no cost medical living benefits. It's disrupting the industry because you don't just have to die to use your life insurance. And and if we if I can help uh, to uh, bring prosperity back to middle America by upgrading policies to no cost medical living benefits, families are not going to be wiped out when somebody gets sick or ill or injured and and can no longer work and becomes a drain on the family. Um, just to be honest about that, that is what mm -hmm. happened. And then, and then it wipes it wipes the families out. They're wiped out financially. And even though there might be a death benefit involved, it was needed earlier. So that is the disruption in our industry and in converting, you know, the 95% of the policies out there that are death benefit only to something that you don't have to die to use, which, as I say, it's a lot sexier if you don't have to die to use something. So that's why I make a little joke out of it, because I want to engage in conversation about that, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, think about it. Five years ago, telehealth was this minute right. conversation. Um, and we've seen it in the last two years become this major thing that if doctor's offices and you yep. know, everyone, the dental, dental, yes, optometrists, everybody went to telehealth. Um, and we're looking at you having a global organization. How did technology support you in communicating and growing oh. what it is that you're doing? Well, we grew uh, the um, the 2020 when when uh, when COVID hit, uh, we actually exploded. Our business grew uh, exponentially because we very nimbly focused more on uh, on uh, Zoom and being able to reach people virtually. Uh, the other thing too is our company came out and said, if you are diagnosed, and a lot of insurance companies came out and said they are not providing any coverage for COVID claims. Uh, we did the exact opposite and we said because of our commitment to medical living benefits we said if you're diagnosed with COVID-19 and it triggers any of our medical living benefits including the death benefit you are covered that was huge and that's the integrity of standing behind your cause you don't waver when the going gets tough so there may be other companies that are getting into medical living benefits because that's a buzzword but we've been doing it longer and with a lot more integrity and much more robustly as well that is awesome. And I think that you've helped to set the stage for what we're going to be going into right. in the future. Just like entering the age of Aquarius and knowing that we're in a time and energy of peace and harmony and right. love and collaboration. Um, we're also recognizing that we're in a decade of uh, what some call the 5.0 entrepreneur 5.0 and society 5.0, technology 5.0. The metaverse is a 5.0 um, factor right. in society. And these are all new doors to freedom that are opening for us. And it means we're creating this new normal in a lot of areas. And um, yes. when these changes came about, how did you, how did you incorporate them into things? I mean, net was it networking? Was it more virtual client meetings? Was it um, yeah. all of the above? And and again, virtual was the oper uh, was is the operative word there. Um, and our team very again very nimbly shifted to zoom again i have i have almost 150 agents on my team and we're all over the country so um yes to answer your question it it, it things things ma magnified very quickly and and are moving much more quickly now too to your point 5.0 so you can build something much more quickly and you but you have to be ready to change and to uh, to modify how you're doing business, and that's exactly what we did. And because of our proprietary products that nobody else had as well, and the fear surrounding COVID and our response of our company saying you are covered, that helped to jettison us. Um, uh, starting, you know, I mean, we've been we've been in this business a long time, but 
especially 2020, it was not a downturn for us. It was a, it was a huge uptick for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I can only imagine when you recognize that there's something out there that can help you. Um, yeah, you're, you're moving in that direction. And that's the path to confidence that we're talking yeah. about, right? And living your best life, knowing that there's something that can be added to your lifestyle that can help to reduce stress, to improve your lifestyle, because, you know, one of the things that we fear most is not having the protections that we need that cause stress. You know, you can take a walk in nature, but that walk in nature, when you get back to the, to the front door, um, you know, you still want to have that peace of mind that we so often talk about. Well, you know, you correct, Phelan, and, and I'm, I'm going to add this one. So when I say sexy life insurance, number one, the medical living benefits, no cost me medical living benefits that you don't have to die to use. But number two also is uh, with, with life insurance, a lot of people don't know it can be like a Roth IRA on steroids and it can you can create a tax-free income stream for yourself so a lot of people have iras or 401ks where you're deferring your taxes well if you're kicking the can down the road ask yourself do i think taxes are going to be higher or lower when i retire and if the answer is higher then wouldn't you want to diversify and put more money into something that you could pay taxes on the seed and not the harvest with all the medical living benefits in force with that as well for the rest of your life prospectively. So that's sexy part two is I help people to diversify their income uh, for retirement to a tax-free income stream where they don't need to worry about taxes at that point with that. Awesome. And, and that goes back to the legacy and prosperity that you and I have talked about in helping to bring legacy and, uh, and, and that prosperity back to middle middle america families especially that that is so key so key and let's talk about the health industry okay. you know um what do you see that people are waking up to and recognizing that we actually have to unlearn to get more firmly on the path to creating this confidence and learning about living our best life what do we have to unlearn well first of all you, I consider myself to be the CEO of my health. I love and, that. And I'm responsible for my health. My doctor is not responsible for that. I'm not going to a doctor for advice about my, I know what I need to do. I know I need to eat better. I do eat well. I know I need to work out a certain number of times a week, which I do. I'm, I'm responsible for my health. And, and if I have, and because I have several of these policies as well, um, Hopefully I don't have to use any of the medical living benefits. You and I were talking about that. You're in great health too. Hopefully you never have to use it. And you can just focus on then building tax-free income for yourself, but with the safety net, if you need it, but it all comes back to, again, taking care of yourself, putting self-care, putting your health first, because if you don't have that, everything else goes downhill. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, and therein lies the reason that people lack confidence about, you know, what's ahead of them because, yep. you know, it's, it's the whole preparation, right? Um, preventing illness is better than trying to reverse what you already have and getting in when Correct. you're young. We all know the benefits of co compound interest and compound everything yep. and doing things when you're younger is better. Um, so how do we broach this conversation with our children or our grandchildren to kind of wake them up to the fact that, you know, if they start something like this now, right. you know, in 10 years, 20 years, when they're 40 and 50, they've pretty much got it made. Well, I would say to that, the, the, one of the problems we have in the, in the United States is a lack of financial literacy. So first of all, is talking about that, to your point, just having that conversation and talking about the, the, the compounding of interest for, and the compounding of good health habits. They really go hand in hand. And it comes, it comes back to, to discipline and communication about what you're doing and why, and then setting uh setting the example of doing that yourself not just saying you're going to do that but putting something in place and then sharing that with them 
so that they can put something in place earlier than you did. It'll cost them less and it'll be much more robust for their retirement as well. Absolutely. Did and I answer your question? You did. You did. Um, and maybe just a little more. What are some of the what's some of the conversation that you're actually in that you talk to people about? You know, have you shared any of this with your child or grandchild? Um, right. Because I know one of one of the issues that many families face is that, you know, they wake up and mom or dad, you know, they're ill or they're gone and they have no idea what they wanted, what they had in place. How do you get someone to have those conversations and what do they say? Hey, I want to talk to you about my life insurance. Mm, maybe. What do you typically yeah. find? Well, you know what? I think it comes back to, first of all, you want to make it a fun conversation. How can it be fun? It can be fun if you if you talk about creating something extraordinary for your life. Then it is not about death. It truly is. It comes back again to life. And I think because people want to talk about things that are more pleasant and things that inspire them. And this is a conversation that can inspire it can. It doesn't have to be about a, a conversation just about death. It doesn't have to be fear-based conversation, but more about what's possible and what you can create for your life. That's good. That is really good. Don't make it a fear-based conversation and make Correct. it something fun. Make it something that um, is attractive to the person that you're in conversation with because uh, I think that's part of it, you know, just like we've been, uh, we've learned about, you know, eating stuff that may taste really good, but it ends up that it's not only addictive, it will bury you a lot sooner right. than you would like. Um, these conversations being held are also um, allowing the body to, you um, I want to say become anxious and in that anxious creating more stress and you know so these are things that we want to talk about and, and oh. bring in well and, and to your point actually I, I i'm trying to remember who, who said this but uh basically um i i do not fear uh worry is a wasted emotion and a lack of faith it's also it's also related to a lack of action so so what i would encourage people to do is what do you even have for your life insurance? A lot of people don't even know. Go dig out your policy and see what you have. Is there anything sexy about it? Is it expired and you didn't even know it already expired? Find out what you have and then see what you can do to upgrade your existing policy to a sexy life insurance policy that you do not have to die to use. And um, that's the starting point, I would say. And that starts the conversation off to just to be in action and to be open to having that conversation. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Lisa, many of our conversations here on the Health, Wisdom, and Wealth show dive into the subject of using lifestyle and food as medicine, in particular, really living a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. Yes. And it's not just the food that we eat, but everything that we talked about, you know, the water and the exercise and the sleep. And there's a great deal of wealth and healing and success related to these types of sustainable lifestyle. What's your biggest advice that you would encourage someone to live more of this healthy lifestyle? Well, I'm a gym rat. I love working out. I'm very grateful that I do. I don't feel that I have to work out multiple times a week, although I do. I feel that I get to. It is a, it's a blessing to me and it's a gift to me. And when I go to the gym or wherever I'm working out, it's, it's my temple. And, um, gosh, oh, I get so excited about that. Just thinking about that. But, uh, but again, I think it has to do with, um, you know, what, would you rephrase that for me one more time? I got, I got distracted a moment. What's your biggest advice about living this kind of a lifestyle? And I get, I get what you're saying was, you know, make it something that's heart-based. 
you know, okay. love, love what you're doing, love working out and figure yeah. out what you love about it. And well, it, it is about self-care. It is about self-care first and foremost. And I like to use the, the, uh, the, the saying, putting on your own oxygen mask first, because everything emanates from you. If you're in breakdown, you have nothing to give to anybody. If you are, I think Oprah said, if you have, if there's nothing in your cup, you've got nothing to give anybody else. So you want to keep yourself uh, full. You want to be full of yourself. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have more to give. You like that? I like that. Uh, <laughs> be full of yourself. You know, again, disruptive. It takes on a whole different yes. meaning than yes. what, what many yes. have learned it to be. But, but being full of yourself actually is, enables you to be more generous with others because Absolutely. You, have, you have more to give. And that, that starts again, that's part of self-care. So, Absolutely. And I think that's a disruptor too. You yeah. know, how many of us were, were nurtured growing up to take care of ourselves? And if we did, it was always take care of others first and then right. you can take care of yourself. Right. But you mentioned it, we've got to put on our own oxygen mask first yep. so that we're able to take care of others. Yes. Awesome. Well, Lisa, I think that we have gotten a lot of great information about this new sexy type of life insurance and um, the fact that you, there's even more to it, that you can use it as an investment vehicle and the whole legacy and prosperity piece yep. of it all before or as we wrap up, before we wrap up, um, and as we bring our conversation to a close, is there some overall wisdom about this path to confidence and freedom that you believe important to share in the short time we have left together? Something you want to have a positive impact on our audience? Would you please share something with us? Embrace what's possible in your life be open to that change and have the wherewithal to uh, and discipline to implement even baby step actions towards that end. Awesome. Very grounded and sound. I love it. Thank you, Lisa. That was awesome. My and to, to our audience, please reach out to Lisa and find out more about what she's up to. Find out more about this sexy stuff that she's talking about because bringing a little sexy into our lives to decrease stress, to increase our legacy opportunities and the prosperity that we have and we're sharing in the world. Um, her information is below this video. And if you're ready to bring some of that in, reach out. Lisa is here for you. And I'm so grateful for that. As we're starting a new year, a new decade, we want to make sure that people are equipped with the information that they can take away and improve their lives with. And if you're already there, share this and help someone else get on this path. Um, Okay, if you are a health wisdom or wealth practitioner and you'd like to share your knowledge and expertise with our audience to be in this type of conversation, reach out to me. PM me, message me on Facebook, message me in LinkedIn or email me at vlin at p3academy.com and let's connect. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. I am so glad that Lisa was able to be here with me to share this information with you, something that both of us are very passionate about because it is about health, wisdom, and wealth. Thank you, Lisa. Elin, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show today and um, happy uh, 2022 to everybody. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And to our audience, everybody, take care. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, remember, be well, live, love, and be a bigger positive impact maker in your world. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.